Hello, fifth graders. Today I'm going to be showing you some pictures of Fort Ticonderoga. If you do want to look at a picture longer, just pause the video. Uh, Fort Ticonderoga is located in the upper part of New York. It's right on Lake Champlain, which you can see right here. This is from the fort looking out at the lake. And next to it are two mountain ranges called Mount Independence here and Mount Defiance there. And Fort Ticonderoga was around during the French and Indian War, and it also played an important part in the Revolutionary War near the beginning of the war. Um, so this is the Battle of the French Lines in 1758. This is the part that is from the French and Indian War. And here you can just see a little bit of French and Indian War fighting there. They made a little model of what it would have looked like. I just zoomed in a little bit closer on that model so you can see what the fort would have looked like at the time of the um, French and Indian War. The fort walls were made out of wood. Um, then they would change it to be made out of stone. So here I am looking at the fort, from the fort up to Fort uh, Defiance, or Mount Defiance, I should say. And up there is a good place where the enemy would have probably put cannons because you want to try to get your cannons higher up in the air because it's easier to hit your enemy. Here I am looking now down from Fort Defiance or Mount Defiance down to Fort Ticonderoga. And at the beginning of the war, this, uh, the Revolutionary War, this fort was controlled by the British. And the Americans wanted control of this fort basically because they wanted the cannons and cannonballs that were inside that fort. Here is the main entrance into Fort Ticonderoga, and here you can see the stone walls that they made after the French and Indian War. They changed it from uh, wooden walls to stone walls. And then there are a couple examples of the cannons that the, that the colonists would want at the beginning of the Revolutionary War. And this plaque just says some of the famous people that have entered this fort. You can see like George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Benedict Arnold, who we'll talk about later, and then just some of the more famous people here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but it's pretty neat to see how many people went to this fort. Here's just another angle of the walls of the fort. You can see some more cannons. Uh, the fort was designed to be able to see all directions and have cannons pointing in all directions. That way you could defend the fort uh, from whatever side the enemy attacks. And now here's looking at, again, another view of Lake Champlain from inside the, of the fort. And all those cannons again, which refer to everything that looks like a cannon falls under the category of artillery. And just another row, an angle looking down the row of cannon. These ones are pointing out towards the lake. And the, that way, if anybody attacked from the water, they had plenty of uh, cannons there to meet them. And these cannons would be spread out all the way around the edge of the fort. Here's looking towards the back side of the fort. So the way I was taking this picture, I had the, the lake behind me. And so this would have been uh, looking towards the back side. And all those trees you see, they would have been cleared out. They would not have allowed trees to be up like that because they want clear view. So all of the land for a good distance away from the fort would have been cleared and kept free of trees. Just another look at the one of the points at the back of the fort. All this fencing stuff that you can see here would not have been there at the time. They just put it up there to keep uh, tourists from falling. Uh, this wall is a representation of the original wooden walls of Fort uh, Carly, uh, Carrion. And when it was, at first, it was a French fort. So the French were the first to build it at the beginning, before the French and Indian War. And this is over the winter of 1775. 756, soldiers recorded that the fort's walls were this high. Imagine this instead of stone as you walk around the fort's walls today. Uh, the original wall was made of oak, not pine, and the timbers were up to a foot and a half thick. Um, so this is what the construction of the fort would have looked like when the French built it. And at that time, it was Fort uh, Carrion, and then when the British took it over, they changed the name to Fort Ticonderoga. Just another angle of how the two uh, corners would come together. Kind of looks like Lincoln Logs in a way. So, and this is one area of the fort. This is inside the fort. They would have had several buildings here. One building would have been the barracks where the soldiers lived. 
This building you're looking at here was, they had a lot of shops there, whether it was shops that would work with like the harness of the horse's leather, uh, repairing shoes, any other kind of repair places they would have in, inside that building there. That is, that was never originally a part of the fort. That's when they built after that is where the museum and gift shop are located inside um, that building. Pretty cool little museum inside there. This is where the barracks, this is where the soldiers would have stayed. Uh, so you can see the bunk beds and, yep. and then the drum there. Drums during the time would have been used mainly for communication because battles get loud and you have to be able to tell your soldiers what to do. So they'd use drums and bugles, so trumpet type things. Uh, this uniform here is white, so that represents the French the, during the time. So it's kind of neat. Uh, what they do every year, they change. And when you go to the fort, one summer, they could pretend it's a French fort. The next summer, it would be a British fort. The next summer, it would be an American fort. So they're always changing up who would um, who they're representing. So the year I was there, there it was the French year. So that's why they have the white uniform there. And these are the drummers that I were, were talking about. Drums used communication, uh, help soldiers keep time. Was there marching to march to the beat of the drum? Uh, this is more in reference to the Native American role that they had in both the French and Indian War and the Revolutionary War. They acted as scouts, so lookouts. So that's why they're using the telescope there. Uh, this is just an example of a candle and the holder that they would have they put them in. And these lanterns like this provided quite a bit of light. And this is a way they would cook food. So they'd have, they could cook, this is the stove part, they cook bread or anything in there. And around that, they would put uh, pots for cooking some sort of soup or stew. Uh, the gabion is just a fancy French word. It's a, a fancy way of saying you take these things like here, you can see these, putting these sticks and you're putting them into a barrel-like shape. And then you just weave sticks in there and then you fill that with anything, whether it's dirt, uh, grass, anything you could to, to fill them up. And then you stack them on top of each other and you get a nice wall. And that's what's called a gabion. That's a fancy French word. And here are some of those gabions that you can see. So they weave these sticks here. They fill them with dirt, and they make a nice wall. And uh, it's tough for bullets, in this case, musket balls, to go through the dirt. Uh, cannonballs can do a little more destruction to them, but they're there mostly to protect from uh, uh, gunfire. Uh, one thing you read about in the textbook was Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys, uh, along with uh, Benedict Arnold coming to attack Fort Ticonderoga. And they did that in the middle of the night. And when they arrived, they surprised the British soldiers that were inside Fort Ticonderoga. And they were able to take the fort over without firing a shot. So now the Americans have control of the fort, which is important because, like I said earlier, they wanted the cannonballs and the cannons that were in there. So when they were able to take Fort Ticonderoga without anybody getting shot, anything like that, it was a big success for the Americans. So in this picture here, it shows the, the Green Mountain Boys. Um, up here is Ethan Allen talking to the commander of the fort, and down here would have been Benedict Arnold. Um, so they were able to capture the fort, which was, like I said earlier, a little bit ago, very important for the Americans. And they were able to take those cannons from up here in New York at Fort Ticonderoga, and through the snow and everything, bring them down to Boston. And it was through the use of those cannons, they were able to fire into the town of Boston and force the British out of that city. Another big, uh, important day for the Americans. And here they are pushing the cannons through the snow with the help of uh, oxen. And I think that is my last picture. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. But Fort Ticonderoga was an important thing. Um, like I said, the Americans capturing it, getting the cannonballs from that and the cannons. A little bit later on in the war, the British would recapture the fort and it would remain in British hands until the war ended in 1783. So uh, thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day. Take care. Bye.